This is the Runcam Micro HD Zero. Carl at DiviMath is actively asking for feedback from users, and I was one of those people that uh, feedback was asked for. And of course, I asked for a larger lens. So this is a nice glass M12 lens and a better sensor. And I think I'll let the video results speak for themselves. Later on in the video, I'll go over some more of the specifics. Camera video footage is what you're here to see, so for the next couple minutes, uh, I've got a few sample clips from my last few weeks of flying with this camera in various lighting conditions and use cases. Enjoy. This is the Runcam Micro HD Zero. It's a micro sized camera designed for shark bite that HD Zero or DiviMath is uh, producing alongside Runcam. It's designed to give pilots a higher quality image than the nano sized cameras that we have available today. <clears throat> it is very similar to the uh, Runcam MIPI. So a lot of the reviews you've seen for that camera are going to be similar for this one. But this has been specifically tuned to work with SharkBite. And that tuning I'm talking about is not the Handshake IC that uh, gets talked about a lot. Actually that Handshake IC that uh, is put on here to work with SharkBite is actually there to uh, coordinate parameters for the camera to talk to the VTX because these MIPI cameras, while it might be a standard interface, do have different signaling that comes from the camera. The other thing that that's used for is for the on-screen display menu on some cameras. This camera does not have an on-screen display menu, unfortunately. That said, it is a very good looking camera. Now here's the comparison to the uh, existing Runcam Nano HD that you can buy. What's interesting is that the Nano HD sticks out a lot further uh, from the mounting posts than the new micro camera does. So that could make this a little bit easier to install in some builds. The other thing that's interesting is that the micro camera is only six and a half grams. It's very light. I've been surprised when I've gone to pick it up for an M12 lens. This is a lightweight camera. I believe the stock camera is uh, the stock or the, the Runcam Nano HD is about five grams. So five grams versus uh, six and a half grams on the micro. Now this isn't specific to this camera, more about shark bite in general. This system has very, very good motion clarity, I guess I would call it. Uh, as you're moving past things, there's not um, time-based compression occurring where the frames kind of get blurred together. It's it's all every image is is very independent from the, the from the last, and it makes for a very uh, sharp-looking image without uh, artifacts from prior frames. I really like the way it looks. 
Another thing I really, really like is that the frame rate is locked in perfectly smooth and never a drop frame. On the downside, you can see sometimes there is some image loss, and that's just how SharpBite works. But these are the trade-offs that we make. Do we want to have uh, missing information from the frame and maintain a high frame rate, or do we want to drop frames, retransmit, whatever? Uh, I like to have very consistent video frames. This camera handles backlit conditions much, much better than the nano cameras do. So when you're looking into the sun and the sun is backlighting the leaves and stuff like that, it comes through much, much better than the other cameras that we've had before. The sharpness and contrast capability of this camera gave me a lot of confidence to fly through trees like this. I don't typically fly through trees, but I find myself just wanting to do it over and over again, finding new gaps to try to go through and stuff like that. Uh, at this point, I'm also pretty far away from myself, so you can get a little bit of idea about the signal handling. Um, all of this is running on 200 milliwatt on the uh, VTXR, the racing VTX. So here's another shot of going up close to the trees. Um, lots of detail on the trees. And again, this is one of those kind of backlit conditions I was talking about where the other cameras don't do a very good job. Now it's getting a lot darker as I'm going on to record this. The uh, camera has a very good low light handling. Um, it's actually quite a bit darker in this scene than what it looks like because it's, it's raising up the exposure. Uh, I'm getting into dusk here, and the sun is going below the horizon. You'll see it kind of peak up. Here's what fast motion looks like uh, when, when there's very little light uh, left over. And also it's a little bit more overcast. So you can still see a lot of detail, and I'm able to fly as fast as I've ever flown with other cameras. So I'm not noticing any uh, discernible latency. This camera is able to pick out a lot of detail and a lot of contrast uh, and color in low light scenarios. You can see the sun is just peeking over the horizon there and uh, there's a lot of detail remaining in the scene. Very much like flying these bigger sensor cameras. This lens has a nice uh, wide field of view. Uh, specifically, I'm looking for vertical field of view with this system because it's 16 by 9, and I'm happy to report that this lens has a 75 degree field of view versus a 65 degree field of view on the standard M8 lens. The low light performance of this camera is very good. Um, so again, what you see here is a lot darker to the naked eye than it is here. You can see how much the lights in that parking lot over there are actually lighting up the area versus uh, what we're seeing on the camera. And a little fireworks, why not? <laughs> so I bet you want me to talk about some negatives, and there are some. So here's some daylight footage and I, I think that this camera oversaturates the image a bit more than I would have liked. There's not a way to change the parameters because there's, there's no way to get into the camera menu so what we have here is what we get. Uh, another thing that you'll see if you look really close at hard edges is I think this camera is uh, much sharper than past cameras that we've had before. And with that increased sharpness, there's there's more detail to send over the video stream than before. So if you look um, at times, you, you can see some artifacts occurring from, I think, the video transmission technology itself. Um, I am OK with this. I think that the quality of the image is very good and is very useful when I'm flying. Uh, to have all that extra detail, but it is something to point out that this isn't a perfect system. The camera maybe could be tuned a little bit better for shark bite. Um, overall, though, I really, really like flying this camera. 
some final bits here. Um, Carl had asked for feedback on what pilots need, the things that aren't offered out there at the moment. And what I said is I, I think we need to have some shorter cables uh, for, for micro builds, some shorter MIPI cables, so they're not taking up as much space in the build, and also some longer cables. So as a result of that, uh, there's going to be a uh, four centimeter cable available for small builds and a nice uh, 25 centimeter or about 10 inch MIPI cable available for larger builds like this flying wing that I've got flying here. So that's really great that uh, DiviMath HD0 is providing some options that pilots need that we don't have. And I'm, I'm really excited for the collaboration um, and, and the asking for feedback and, and the pace of development with everything happening with SharkBite. And it sounds like a lot of other people are too. So I think uh, I'm re really happy with this camera. I'm really glad that we have another option rather than just the nano cameras. And um, go ahead and buy one. I know how much uh, YouTube compression and, and other things can affect the quality of the video that you're looking at. So I'm going to provide a link to all of the raw uh, DVR recordings that I, I took with this camera. So you can take a look at it yourself, put it on your goggles to take a look at what it looks like in the goggle. Um, I think you're really going to like it. I'll also have a link to the HD0 store shop where you can buy this camera. It's only going to be available there. Uh, it's not an affiliate link. I just like to fly. Enjoy.